Hello, and welcome to The Base, Big and Small Screens. This week, this week, I'd like to talk to you about Suicide Squad, the extended cut. Now, this is something that came out fairly recently, and I picked it up there just yesterday and decided to, well, not yesterday, Saturday, uh, and decided to check it out to see how it compared with the original. So, I'm not going to talk too much about the plot of the movie or anything like that. I've already said that in my original coverage of the Suicide Squad. What I would like to talk about today is how the new scenes, the new stuff that's been added, um, how it affects the movie, and a couple other things uh, about the movie in particular. Now, there are definitely some new scenes in here that were not in the original. Uh, some scenes have been extended, uh, especially the uh, the bit with the Harley Quinn opening, uh, there's a little bit more to that that isn't quite seen. Um, some little things sprinkled in there. Uh, there's some more flashbacks to Harley Quinn's backstory. And there is a lot more banter between the members of the Suicide Squad uh, that we see. There's a lot more dialogue passing between them uh, in the early stages of the movie when they're going through the city and whatnot which really makes things nice. Uh, I quite I quite like uh, what I've seen in it. Now, does it make the movie better? Uh, I'm going to have to say no. It doesn't really make the movie better, but it does lend a lot... It, it makes the narrative of the movie a little more cohesive. Uh, there's more of that um, uh, bridging... Uh, tendons and cartilage and whatnot, connecting all the pieces of it. It it makes some of these the cinematography some of the cinematography less jarring to me at least because there's more space between the the scene shifts uh, because of this uh, added banter and whatnot that's been going on. So it's less like cut, 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 and. I think it works well, um, and uh, the, the banter is amazing for uh, fleshing out some characters a little more. Uh, you get to see um, not only uh, Deadpool talking to Harley about, you know, uh, getting ready to kill all the guys in here and have them make their escape, but Harley then goes and talks to Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang goes and talks to, uh, was it El Diablo, as well as Killer Croc, and gets batted away by Killer Croc because th there's some interesting stuff happening there and whatnot, as well as uh, Harley Quinn talking to uh, Katana for a bit. That was never in the theatrical release, and I really like that. It, it showed off some stuff that didn't that we didn't get to see in the theatrical release, um, which really helped uh, kind of give a little bit more cohesion to the story, as well as explaining why uh, Deadpool or not Deadpool, listen to me, Deadshot. Uh, did I say Deadpool before? If I did, I'm sorry. Deadshot. Uh, uh, why he ends up helping Flag a little bit later on. Because in the movie, it was kind of a bit that it was like, okay, we had him planning to kill everybody, and then there seemed to be this sudden shift where he's siding with Flag for, like, no real reason. But there is with this extended cut because it has Flag talking to Deadshot in kind of a private little moment, and he basically says... I need you to help me keep all the rest of these jokers together. If you do, I'll make sure you get to see your daughter again. I will make that happen. And he, he makes him a promise. So Deadpool is, or Deadpool, Deadshot is like, okay, I can do this. Because he's all about getting his daughter, uh, seeing her again and whatnot. So it, it kind of lends itself a little well. It, Coheses the film a little more. Film's still a hot mess. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's a hot mess that I enjoy watching because I liked the movie the first time. 
the extended cut hasn't changed that. Still like it. Still a hot mess, but it it kind of smooths out some of those wrinkles. Now, there is another thing with this movie that I wanted to talk about in a little bit more in depth, is the fact that there's been a lot of people I know, uh, back before this movie came out, talking about the trailers and how it was objectifying Harley Quinn, how she doesn't have any agency, um, how it's glorifying an abusive, rela re abusive relationship between her and the Joker and whatnot. And I'm going to say right now that the relationship between Harley Quinn and the Joker uh, in the comic books is absolutely abusive. Uh, it's absolutely not healthy at all. Uh, it's the sort of relationship that women and men should avoid getting into. Uh, but uh, I'm not looking at this movie with any of the comics. I'm taking this movie just as it is. I'm divesting the entire comics, what I know, which isn't a lot compared to some people, but what I know of the comics, I'm divesting that. It's not connected to this in any way, because this is the first movie where we get to see Harley Quinn. Uh, it is the first movie where we get to see that relationship between her and the Joker. And what I saw in this in the extended cut, in the original theatrical release, does not lend me to believe, does not lead me to believe that they are glorifying an abusive relationship. I didn't really see a lot of an abusive relationship there in what has been shown. Uh, because what has been shown? Well, we get to see Harley Quinn. We get to see her backstory where she starts falling for the Joker while she was treating him as a doctor uh, and how she ends up helping him by getting him a machine gun so him and his goons can shoot up Arkham Asylum and whatnot. Uh, that all happens. That all is shown. Then she ends up getting strapped down to a table and electroshocked by the Joker for her reward. And he kind of hints in this one, in the original theatrical release, it showed some of that, but in here they show a little more where um, he's kind of taunting her in a way that um, basically her love that she was basically professing for him and falling for him and whatnot was kind of a bit of a torment to him. So that's why he's doing this. Uh, again, not excusing it, not excusing the behavior at all. But this is his reasoning, the Joker's. And he goes and electroshocks her. And then you get to see another scene later on when she's actually Harley Quinn and is the Joker's girl. And has the whole gangster scene, which I mentioned in the my original review in Big and Small Screens that I think is a complete setup on their part. Where they, this gangster dude is looking at her and the Joker offers her to him and he's like, you know, I don't want to cause any trouble at which Harley takes as a rejection and is like, what, I'm not good enough for you? And the Joker is like, gets all pissed off and shoots him. I think that was a setup. I still do. Uh, that's shown in the movie. Uh, you get to see Harley being her usual crazy self. There's definitely some sex appeal being shown there. Absolutely with uh with her outfit and whatnot absolutely that's in there um but you also get to see harley is not just crazy but intelligent as well because in the extended edition she not only is uh making people underestimate her by acting crazier than she is but she also is still very much a psychiatrist in that she's she psychoanalyzes the people around her. Uh, Deadshot being textbook psychopath. Uh, Katana, she has that little uh, thing with her in the extended cut where she psychoanalyzes her a little bit and kind of gets under her skin a little, I think, um, as well as poking at uh, El Diablo later on. Um, 
she's definitely in love with the Joker because you get to see an extended cut uh, in this one. You get to see a bit where she sees a motorcycle and she remembers before she gets that dip in the vat of chemicals. Uh, before that, where she's chasing him down on a motorcycle uh, and he's in the car wanting nothing to do with her. He's even like looking out the window and he sees her off of here and he's like holding a hand up so he can't see her. Because you get this wonderful little scene where he is trying to have nothing to do with Harley Quinn or Dr. Harleen Quinzel and she's still in love with him uh, even after that. Uh, and she chides him for, you know, having completed all the tests that he wanted her to do. Why won't, why won't he let her in? Ends up pulling a gun and shooting this trucker who pulls up behind them because they're stopped in the middle of the road arguing. Uh, shoots him, this trucker guy, and points the gun at the Joker. And the Joker's just like, do it. Go on, shoot me. Come on, do it. At which point Harley has this line saying that he, the Joker, saying, you, you're afraid of my harp, but you're not afraid of a gun. And that, that's interesting. Because you get this thing where, like, you get this idea that the Joker, uh, at least the way they're portraying him in this, um, is trying not to have any attachment to her, even though she is having an attachment to him. So she is forcing, forcing him to accept her. And then the next flashback scene you see is the one that, with the vat of chemicals, where she ends up diving in on her own. And then the Joker looks like he's going to walk away, and he gets this look on his face. He's like, and takes off his jacket and jumps in after her. And with all those flashback scenes together like that, it makes me think that Basically, Harley Quinn fell for the Joker, but the Joker didn't fall for her right away. The Joker was simply using her and basically trying to keep her from being attached and found her annoying until she forced her way into his heart, which is where he is, when the present of this movie is happening, trying to find her, trying to get her back because she's his girl, so to speak. Uh, now, in no way does this movie portray this relationship as being healthy. There is a lot of obsession going on, on both sides of the coin, on this particular relationship. So, it doesn't portray it as being healthy at all. But I don't think it portrays it as being abusive, not in what we've seen. Because the only actual abuse that has happened has been that bit of electroshock therapy. I mean, you could argue anything uh, is abusive, but I'm just looking, you know, purely like physical, emotional abuse. It doesn't seem to be. Now, I'm no expert, but just from what I've seen in the show, and it's admittedly not a lot, but it doesn't seem to be. And the fact of her, of Harley not having agency, again, I don't think that's true because like she throws herself off into the vat of chemicals on her own she is the one going after the joker trying to get him to return her love her unrequited love at that point um she is definitely her own uh being and as i mentioned in my other one my other review i at least i think i did um harley quinn has always been the sort to use her own sexuality, use her own femininity to make others underestimate her. Uh, she plays up the crazy a lot more than she actually is to make people underestimate her, to make people not take her seriously because they should be taking her seriously because she's every bit as deadly of a bad guy as anyone else in this movie. Uh, there's, they show some other stuff in here as well with a couple of the other characters. Uh, you get to see a little bit more uh, and hear a little bit more from El Diablo and uh, Captain Boomerang and Flag as well. 
So there's some interesting little bits. As I said, it doesn't really fix the movie or make it better, but it does help the movie. It helps smooth out some of the wrinkles. So I think it's pretty good. The extended cut, well worth your time to check out. If you like the first, like the actual theatrical release, uh, picking up the extended cut now that it's out is a good idea. So I'm going to leave this episode here. As always, if you like what I'm doing, please give that like button a tap. Uh, give that subscribe button a tap as well if you haven't already. So you can be kept apprised of when I do new videos. Usually try and get at least one video out a week, if not more. And throw a comment in the comment section. Uh, have you seen the extended cut of Suicide? What did you think about the uh, the new scenes? Uh, did they smooth out the wrinkles? What did you think about uh, Harley and her agency and whatnot in the movie? Throw a comment in that comment section. I'd love to get the discussion going with some people. And until next time, uh, check out Suicide Squad, the extended cut. You might like it. And I'll see you next time.